Hello and welcome to this new tutorial on how to use the for loop in shell scripting. Now the first thing that we need to know is why loops, why we need loops. So we require loops whenever we want to repeat a code certain number of times. Uh, a very basic example can be that you want to print your name 10 times. So rather than writing echo and then your name 10 times, you can use a loop and write that statement only once. So we are going to learn today that how we can use the loops to repeat any set of statements n number of times. Now the common types of loops that we use in shell scripting are for loop, while loop and until. In this video lecture we are only going to focus on the first one that is for loop. Now for loop can be used in two ways that is there are two syntax for using the for loop. The first syntax is you write the keyword for and then the variable name. This variable name is used to assign different values. So now whatever values you want will be assigned to this variable one by one. In is another keyword and then the values. Values means those values which are going to be assigned to the variable. So for variable in values. Then you will write do followed by all the statements that you want to repeat and finally you are going to close it with done. So let's understand this syntax with the help of an example. So let us write our first program for the for loop for one dot sh. Now let us suppose that we want to create three files. So if you don't make use of the for loop you will probably write touch the first file name let us suppose it is 12 then touch the second file name and touch then the third file name. Let's post this. Now what if I say that after creating each file you need to display a message. So you will have to write echo file created and again echo file created and then again echo file created. So you have to write the echo statement each time. Now using the for loop will help us to eliminate this redundant typing. How we are going to do it? We are going to use the first syntax which was for and then a variable. Let us suppose the variable is x in values. Now the values are 12, qwe and t by u. So these were the three names that I want to create a file. Now do, what do you want to do? I want to create a file. Now the for loop is going to run three times because there are three values that you have specified. In the first iteration, x is going to get the value 12. Second time it is going to get the value qwe and third time it is going to get the value tyu. So what I want to do is I want to create a file with whatever is the value inside x. So we'll use dollar x and then I'm going to write echo file created and then done. So the for loop is going to run three times. First time it will get the variable x will get the value 12. So touch dollar x means touch 12. The file will be created and a message will be displayed. Next time x will get the value qwe again a file will be created and similarly for tyu. Save it, change the permissions and run it for 1.sh. File created, file created, file created. If I do ls, we can see all the three files 1, 2, qwe and tyu. So for loops helps us to repeat a set of statements over and over again. Now the second syntax is whenever you need to do a thing for let us suppose n number of times and that n number has what a sequence. For example, you want to repeat a set of statements 5 times. You want to repeat a set of statements 10 times. Then the first syntax might not be useful. In certain cases, the second syntax will be very helpful. If you have done any kind of programming language like C or C++, you will be very familiar with this particular kind of the syntax. Now what the syntax is, we write for 
double circular brackets and then we initialize what is the initial value that the variable can have like you want to go from 0 to 5 or you want to go from 5 to 10 or 10 to 20 and so on then what is the condition condition is until and unless this condition is false the for loop will go on repeating itself the third part is increment or decrement now whatever value you have initialized you need to either increment or decrement it so that the condition ultimately becomes false and you come out of the for loop rest of the syntax is same so you will write do and then whatever statements and then finally done so let us understand this also with an example so let us suppose the program is for 2.sh and I want to print the date and time 10 times once after each second okay so what I am going to do is for now I need to print it 10 times so I can start from 0 and go up till 9 so what will be the initial value that will be 0 and what is the condition since I want to do it 10 times if I am starting from 0 this means that the value has to be less than 10 so 0 1 2 3 so on up to 9 is 10 times so I need to make it false now this means I need to change the value from 0 then it increments slowly one by one till 9 and ultimately it becomes 10 and the condition becomes false so I am going to increment it by 1 so I++ plus plus means increment the value by 1 close it and then do do what if I want to print the date and time I can use the command date okay since I want to do it once every second this means I need to sleep for one second and then done save it change the permissions and then run it So you can see here there is a difference of one second and it is going to happen 10 times. Alright, 10 times with a difference of one second because we have used date to print the date and time. How many time? 10 times with a difference of one second. Now let us look at this example and you try to figure out what this is doing. I will give you a little bit of hint. So you can see that it matches with the first syntax for x is the variable in and there is certain value dollar star do what it is doing touch dollar x echo dollar x file created this means that we are creating the file now you need to figure out what is the role of dollar x just recall our previous discussion on how we can use command line arguments so i hope that you are able to get the answer so dollar star means that it contains all the values that you have entered at the command line. So what is happening here is for x in dollar star, this means that x is going to get all the values that you pass at command line. It doesn't matter how many arguments you pass. You pass one argument, you pass 10 arguments, you pass 100 arguments. The for loop is going to iterate those many times and a file is going to get created. And with creation of each file, it is going to print a message the file name file created so let me just run this for you so this is the code now if i run it dot slash for three dot sh is the file name now i need to pass the arguments here it doesn't matter how many arguments i pass one two three four whatever is the name q5 it's going to create a file with every single name even if I pass just one single argument then also it's going to create a file with that particular name so remember whenever there is no limit on how many arguments you can pass at command line always use dollar x with a for loop to do something repetitively now it is time to test yourself whether you have understood the concept of for loop or not so here's the first question write a shell script to print long list of all the file names passed at command line so remember someone might pass a directory name also someone might pass a name with which neither a file nor a directory exists so first make sure that you are checking whether the file exists 
if yes then only you create a long or then only you display a long list so let's see what was the answer so since the arguments are going to be passed at command line so i have already shown you one example there is no limit so i need to use for x in dollar star do now do what i first need to check whether the file with that name exists or not so this we have already done in our if else part if we check whether minus f dollar x this checks whether whatever name is passed at the command line is of a file or not so if yes then long list this means ls minus l dollar x else you can simply display a message dollar x is not a file all right and then close the if and close the for loop so change the permissions run it and now we need to pass certain names here so let me pass a mix of names something that exists and something that does not so you can see that the first one 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 is a file name so there's a long list for one and ert is not a file similarly if i just change the input i know all these are files so i'll get long list for all those entries now the next question is write a shell script to count the number of file names passed at command line so we have already done how we need to check every command line argument whether it's a file or not so the only part left with you is to count how many of them are file names so let's see that whether you can get it or not all right so we have already done this part in the first question also for x in dollar star means i am going to read all the command line arguments one by one then i am going to check whether it's a file or not the second part of the question was to count how many are files so if it is a file then i am going to do what i need to increment the variable count by 1 this means that count plus 1 so i need to initialize this variable first outside the for loop let's suppose count is initial value is 0 so if the name passed at the command line is a file then i am going to increment the count variable by 1 and then close the loop done and finally when all the arguments have been checked echo total file names were dollar count change the permissions run it for while dot sh now i know that these are the file names which exist but these ones are not so total file names are 3 just one more time so these are the entries in the system again 1 1 2 2 3 3 these are the file names and i know that dir is a directory whereas this one the entry doesn't exist so my answer should again be 3 so you can run it according to the files or directories or any other entry in your system and can check whether it is working fine or not so i hope that the concept of using for loop is clear and in the next tutorial we are going to discuss how to use the while loop so till that time keep watching this tutor do not forget to subscribe and share see you in the next class